Okay, we have our Taylor really interesting integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity. One minus cosine x over x times e to the x dx. Okay, now I know two different ways how to do this, but really it's fine because these two methods are really the same thing. So you can kind of go either way with it. But the first thing I want to do is I just want to bring this e to the x into the numerator. So writing it like this, just a slight rearrangement, we'll kind of separate it out, write it as one minus cosine x over x times e minus x. But then what I want to do here is just kind of parameterize this. I'll create a parameter s right here. And you may see where it's going, but actually I could go in two different directions here because we could parameterize it and create a function like this, f of s here, and do this with Feynman's trick. But what I want to do instead is notice if we kind of separate this off right here, this whole thing is a Laplace transform. This is going to be the Laplace transform 1 minus cosine x over x. And keep in mind, there's no problem creating this parameter just as long as we make a note up here that we just want s to be equal to 1, then that's going to get us back to this. So our goal is going to be this Laplace transform, but we're going to have to come back and solve it with s equal to 1. So for this kind of Laplace transform here, we do have a nice formula we can use. I can write this. If we have the Laplace transform of f of t over t, what we can do on this is use this formula, write this as an integral going from s to infinity, choose a different variable than s, usually on the right side in our Laplace transform formula, we're going to have this as an s. So let's just write this as u. We're just going to need to integrate big f of u du where this function here is going to be the Laplace transform of our f of t part. So for our goal, we're going to need the Laplace transform of 1 minus cosine x. So let's get that value first, but with the property of Laplace transforms, finding this, we can actually break this up into two Laplace transforms. Just because Laplace transforms a linear operator, it's gonna, it has the same property as like an integral because it's an integral. So we can break it up like this and just solve this here. For this first part right here, we can just use the formula on this. This is going to be 1 over s. If this was another constant, it would be like if this was a constant a, we'd have a over s. But in this case, it's just 1. Here we can use the formula if we have, if we're trying to find the Laplace transform of cosine a t. Our formula on this one is going to be s squared plus a squared with an s in the numerator. So here in this one, our a value, our constant in front is just a 1. So this is just going to become s squared plus 1 with a 1 in the numerator. Actually, no, that's going to be an S. Sorry about that. Bring in the S there. That's, I'm thinking of the sign formula there for a second. So for this F of U value right here, all I'm going to do is change the variable on this, and we can write this as 1 over U minus U over U squared plus 1. I did a really dumb thing doing this on paper. It's a good thing I remembered this before doing the video because what I did was I actually combined the fraction, right? So I got this like a common denominator. And so if you put these together and then you try to integrate it, well, then what do you need to do? You need to do partial fractions. So I put it together only to do partial fractions to break it back and get this. So, so putting together a fraction just to do partial fractions is like the greatest inefficiency you can possibly have. Okay, so now that we have our f of u value, let's just take that and I think we can finish this off with a little more space. So going ahead with this formula, trying to find this Laplace transform, we're gonna to wanna to integrate from not zero, but s. So we wanna integrate from s to infinity. Then let's just take this, our f of u, and bring it in here. And then what we have here is actually two easy integrals. Let me kind of make this clear so we can separate these out and we can have this first one. What I can do to set up a substitution here is I can just multiply in two, but so I don't change it, we'll multiply by one half in front here. Then if we were to do the substitution out, if I make this like t or whatever, then we have our dt, we have our derivative in the numerator. So we're just gonna do this on the fly because I think we can see how this works. So first, going ahead and integrating here, we have natural log. I'm going to drop absolute value because we assume that s is going to be greater than 0. So then we're just going to have natural log of u here minus 1 half. And then here it's just going to be natural log of this. So this is going to become, again, dropping absolute value because I should put the limits on here, though. Again, we'll drop absolute value because s is positive, but also because u is squared. And then before I evaluate this, let's actually put these back together with log properties because the way it is right now, these individually are going to diverge. And then maybe I shouldn't have broken it up like that in the first place. But anyway, let's just, I think we can see how it's going to work. So I want to create this one half in common in front. 
But then again, not to change it, I can multiply by a two, so we're just multiplying by one, but let's put this on the exponent here. And then rewriting this, I'll factor out one half. And then with log properties, I can write this as ln u squared over u squared plus one, evaluated from s to infinity. Evaluating this at infinity, if you look at this here as a limit with u going to infinity, what's gonna happen is this whole thing is going to one, Natural log of one is zero, so our first part's gonna be a zero. Second part, let's just plug in s everywhere, so we end up with natural log s squared over s squared plus one. Then let's just clean it up and use the minus sign to flip this, so I can write it as one half natural log s squared plus one over s squared. So this here will be our value for this Laplace transform over here to the left. All that's left to do is we don't really want this in terms of s, we've got a definite integral here. We just need to evaluate this at one. So going ahead, we'll just plug this in here with our S value. What's gonna happen is, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have our one half in front, natural log S squared plus one. In the numerator, we have one squared plus one. And then the denominator, we just have one squared. Simplifying this, we have one half natural log two. Bring the one half into the exponent for my final solution is we have natural log square root of two. Okay, there you go. Good one today using Laplace transforms. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.